Hi, this is Dr. Toby, your host on Health and Wellness, inviting you to watch our show this week with Kevin Noble. Kevin is all the way from Little Rock, Arkansas. He's a drug rep of 20 years experience. He has an associate's degree in engineering. He went to college at the University of Arkansas for media and ended up with an MBA with a concentration in public health. He wants to educate you on the role that drug representatives play in this great medical cascade that you are so aware of. He's a man of faith. He's a man of family. He's a man of fortune. He's a man who has been married 16 years. He's an elder deacon in his church who leads the media ministry in his church, St. Mark's Baptist Church in Arkansas. You will not want to miss this conversation. He talks openly about marriage, about why he went into the, the industry that he's in, and how you as an individual can also pursue your dreams. Hear me, hear me well. Kevin is a man you want to listen to. Jesus is Lord. Hi, you're welcome to the show, Dr. Toby here. This is Faith, Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby. You are, we're so delighted to have you on the show. I have Kevin Noble with me. Kevin Noble is an uh, associate's degree in engineering, bachelor's in media, and he ended up getting an MBA in, in uh, public health after he had started a career as a director of a news agency and a sports agency in Arkansas. He's, he's currently a drug representative for 20 years, happily married. He's a father, he's a son, and he's, he's a mentor to several young people. He's a faithful Christian, and he's here to share his story of how over the years his professional career has transitioned, but he has kept looking onto Jesus through it all. So today he's here as a drug representative, and uh, he's going to tell us a bit about his career and how that has evolved. So, um, all this time you've worked in sales, right? Yes. Sales. In sales. Okay. So, a lot of people don't even know what a drug rep does. A drug rep, who's a drug rep? I mean, only doctors and nurses probably have a clue what you guys do. Mm -hmm. So, can you educate my, my, my television audience about what a drug representative is? that even the right word to use? I'm sure it's like a pharmaceutical liaison. I'm sure there's a better <laughs> word than drug rep. You know what I mean? Uh, the older guys, when I first came in the industry, they were called detail men. Detail? Because a drug representative goes in and we detail a physician. We give them the details about our particular oh. product. Um, when I came into the industry, it was more about having a personality than knowing the science. Oh. Because it was easier to teach someone the science than to teach them to have a personality because there were so many dynamic people that were working in the industry. As pharmaceutical sales, our responsibility is to go in and share with the physicians the intricacies of our particular product and how it differentiates from other products in that class, and then to encourage them to prescribe more of our therapies for their particular patients. Uh, for me, the blessing of it was seeing how that impacted patients' lives, because oftentimes physicians are very, very smart, but they're also very, very busy. So giving them the small, quick, and dirty about a particular product and how it's different from another product that they may or may not remember, not that they didn't know. Wow. They just may not remember because you, I'm coming oh, in with yeah. a blood pressure product and someone's talking about an allergy product, yeah. but then you're seeing someone with, with uh, you know, cholesterol issues. Oh, God, yeah. you know, so as a drug representative, it was always invented for us to find ways to stand out mm -hmm. so that physicians would remember us when it was time to prescribe our products for their patients. Wow. And so that's what you guys do. You take this science to the physicians mm -hmm. and maybe hospitals. Yes, physicians, hospitals, nursing staffs, conventions, and things of that nature because that's when physicians learn all the extra educational stuff. What we've learned is forget physicians love to learn and they love to teach. Mm -hmm. So either they're going to teach us something about a therapy or we're going to share with them something that they can learn. And then, of course, they're able to dive deeper. The only problem is some drug reps think that they're physicians, uh -huh. that they're going to go in and snow a physician with some science, <laughs> and that's a bad idea. <laughs> so you, you said something earlier. You said something about, you know, um, 
you, you went into a drug rep and you saw the benefits and all that. But I wanted you to talk to my audience here. What, what was the, you said something earlier, you said a bachelor, unless you have a bachelor's, they wouldn't even consider you for a drug rep position. Because when, when we're training people, I've been a trainer and a, and a manager in the industry. When we're training people, the level of education that we're training them on is at a, is at a bachelor's degree level. So we need to know that you can at least learn at that level. It really doesn't matter what your degree is in. Uh, I have an associate degree in electronics, but then I have a bachelor's in radio, TV, and film. And then I have an MBA with concentration in public health, which I got later. But it was a lot easier for them to teach me the science, the science than right. anything, because it is at a certain level. We take lots of tests mm. because we have to take a test on the package insert and on all the side effect profiles because we can't come in and share information with you that's not correct. And oftentimes, patients don't really understand the side effects. And if there's a negative side effect that happens with a product, mm -hmm. then we have to report that. What people don't understand is when you're watching those commercials about a product and they say, it comes with these side effects and they read all these side effects out loud, you know, death, runny nose, gastric bypass, all these things. Right. When we test for a drug and we're doing the research and patients come in, whatever illness they have while they're on that test gets put as a side effect. Side effect. For instance, if you're on an allergy medication clinical trial and you have a car accident, they will still say death will be, was part of being on this therapy mm -hmm. because you died while on that therapy. Not that it caused the death, right, caused but that. you were on it. And so we, so we had to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. Because so people, like we said before, people are afraid or were afraid to take the vaccine. And I would tell people, if you're afraid of something, read the back of a Tylenol bottle. If Tylenol was released today, the FDA would not approve it. Because of the side effects. Because of the side effects. And okay. all of us have taken Tylenol before. Mm -hmm. So... A lot of my viewers have this mentality, a lot of the doctors watching have this mentality that a drug rep is a nice looking, dumb, blonde, I hate to use that word, you know, uh, or maybe a good looking male mm -hmm. personality with a charming personality. You're trying to say that it's not just the charisma, it's also the content. Yes. You can't just look good, you have to talk. Well. <laughs> Some when, sense I, when I first started, there was a lot of that, <laughs> and people were actually touching me. They were like, you're real? And for Shearing Plow, I was the only African American in Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. Doing? Or working for Shearing, selling oh, Shearing Plow. Okay. For the only one. I was the only one. Wow. We, we go to regional meetings, and there would be no one else in the room that looked like me besides the staff. And... People would say, you must be really good, because I've never seen either beautiful young ladies, some old guys, then you. <laughs> you. You don't fit. I said, well, I walked in the room and got my first job, and the guy said, it was your personality. He said, when you walked in the room, I knew you were my guy, because that's what they were looking for. But it's the content. There are a lot of drugs out in the market that, you know, they don't do as well as other drugs. You can look at however you want to. Mm -hmm. They're not going to use it, because now the, the look and your attitude gets you in. Now, uh, what are you going to say? And most physicians, they don't have time to dally. They want to know what you got, how much it's going to cost, and how is it going to impact my patients. That's all. Yeah. And if you can cover those three things, then I'll listen. And then after that, talk to my staff. Right. I didn't know this industry existed. I was working in television. Mm -hmm. I fell into this backwards. But if I had known sooner, I would have pursued it. Oh, wow. And oftentimes, People don't notice this. When you're at your doctor's office, especially people going to just a primary care for your checkups, you got a headache, nosebleed, cold. You see these people coming in with these colored bags with all this stuff in them. Those are the drug representatives. And they're coming in to share information with their doctor. And oftentimes, they, when we started, they had plenty of those samples that the doctors were giving to the patients. And the samples are used so that the patient gets started on the medication, if there's some type of insurance hiccup or something like that that's maybe delayed in a couple of days, the patient gets started on the therapy sooner. And then within two to three days, they can go by the pharmacy and pick it up. So in your last, in your 20 years in the industry, you've seen the laws affect yes. what you can bring to. So in the past, I heard doctors used to get, you know, 
everything from cookies to vacations to <laughs> everything you can imagine. And um, I think there's a law, I'm trying to remember the name now, but basically a conflict of interest law. Uh, what's that name now? Well, it, it, it's not more a law, but it's more the pharma guidelines. Oh, okay. The guidelines came down in 2002 and changed the way we worked. Before then, in the 90s, <laughs> my wife calls it the wild, wild west, because we were encouraged strongly to do all those things. Because that's, that's the way business was done. Not that it was good or bad, that's just the way it was done. done right. If we weren't spending money in these doctor's offices, we got yelled at. Mm. I mean, we were told by our, our bosses then, you gotta go in there and you gotta influence these guys so that when you have that conversation, you may have their attention. Mm. I mean, back then when we would take doctors to dinner, they could bring their wives. But then all that changed because it has to be an educational program. Right, right, right. You know, and which most of us, we didn't mind that. But that's just the way the business was. I mean, I had coworkers that would take doctors on ski trips mm -hmm. or take them on hunting trips, them and their families, and we could expense the whole thing. Well, the, the guidelines caught up to that, and now it's more about an educational transfer. I'm going to buy lunch for your staff, a modest meal, so that we can take time out to share an educational scientific right. discussion. Because that way, your staff, and you don't have to leave for lunch. We'll bring it here mm -hmm. so that we can have this conversation. Yeah, so... That's, things have changed in that yes. regard, right? So that's kind of what a drug rep does, works with as a liaison between the pharma industry and the medical industry. Yes, so yes. So you, you, you break it down. We all see the commercials. We all get the journals. But mm -hmm. somebody who can give understanding practically right. to that new product especially, you know. So I guess this is only maybe when the drug is not generic mostly. Is it true? Yes. Because after it becomes generic, is that... Well, m most companies do not put financial support behind a therapy once it becomes generic. Okay. Because what, what people don't understand when they ask why drugs cost so much, after the research and development uh, phase is over, that costs millions and millions of dollars. You, you just imagine uh, maybe 25 to 50 chemists with PhDs in a room, and each of them have 20 to 100 compounds on their desk trying to figure out which combinations work. Right. And the ones that don't work, they just throw away. Well, you have to pay for all those supplies. Yeah. All these chemists, they, they make a living as well right. until they find a drug that, oh, wait, this works in this particular disease. Yeah. Now we got something that we can market. Then once we market, the FDA gives us a certain amount of years for us to right. market it with, before it goes generic. Yeah. And then once it becomes generic, other companies can make it, and, they don't ha and they're, not held, they're held to the standards, but the supplies, it, it, the difference is buying your medicines, medicine at Dillard's or buying it at Walmart. It's still a good quality. But the plus or minus efficacy may be different because they use a more inexpensive product to develop it than the parent, the brand company did. Wow. And they're, st they're still going to work. And for some people, the generics work just fine. But for, like for me and my allergies, I have to have the brand. Claritin. Yeah, Claritin. You can't just did. get Walmart Lorality. No, no. <laughs> I tried it, and it doesn't work as well for me. I would love to because it's cheaper. It's cheaper. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. But, but, but that's why. So when, when we have, I have family members, so I have that conversation with them. I said, when, when the drug first launched, we have a certain amount of time for the drug company to try to recoup their monies from that. Mm -hmm. Then once it goes generic, there's several companies, they only make generics. Mm -hmm. And that, there's a point, pharmacies use lots of generics. And in a lot of our underserved areas, that's where a lot of generics go. Right. But that is fine. There is a market for that, and it really helps those patients. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thanks for the education. I know Viagra was supposed to go generic, <laughs> and I think Pfizer bought out the competition. <laughs> Oftentimes that does happen because you, know, you can buy the generic company, or sometimes there may be a formulation change. Okay. And if there's a formulation change, you can extend the patent uh, okay. because it just has a certain patent life. I think it was five years initially, but I don't know if it's longer now. It, it, now, now it's five to seven, depending okay. on the therapy. But, the therapy. But, when I saw in, in prostate cancer, that drug is 30 years old, and they're still using it in prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Because some patients, you just can't switch their medication. And do you want a generic brand of your cancer medication? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't, you, I mean, you, you, do you want to risk that? Right. And, and so th there, there are the differences there. Okay. But it's important for us in this particular position to make sure we're sharing that information. Right. Like I work for, you know, for companies when things have gone off pad. Well, the doctors may have, they, they receive the email, but they receive 75 emails a day. So you go in and you remind them, they're like, oh, crap. I, so now I need to switch them to something else because that's gone off pad. Or the pharmacies will automatically switch them when you write a prescription for them. Oh, okay. 
And that, that's how it happens. Because you tell a patient, you get the generic for $5, or you pay $25 for the brand. So my viewers are curious. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you claim you have a better work-life balance. But here you are telling me you covered five states. Yes. Uh, Alabama, Mississippi, mm -hmm. Arkansas, Louisiana. Yeah. I mean, that's like driving seven hours. I mean, if you worked in a TV station, you go in, you sit down, you drink your coffee, you go home. You don't drive more than 30 minutes to work. For some people, that's great. For me, I like the diversity of it. I like the different things, the different changes. I know that when I go to a certain group in Tennessee, how they're going to react, what we're going to talk about. I know when I go to Northwest Arkansas, all they're going to talk about is the Razorbacks. Okay, I'm a Razorback fan. I'm a chameleon, if that's what you want to talk about. But for me, I enjoy getting out, moving around. If I had to sit in a cubicle or work in a television station for eight hours, I would be batty. I, I, I'd be bouncing off the wall. Oh, wow. But see, it, but that works for some people. My wife, it would not work for her. She hates driving. She don't want to drive in the driveway. So okay. having to drive to some place and do something doesn't so work for her. different personality. So it takes a personality and you, the autonomy of working alone by yourself. Your boss isn't with you. It's just you. That brings up the issue of family. What if you're a mother with, you know, two young kids and you have to travel for a convention in Florida? I mean, who's going to take care of the babies? You know what I mean? You yes. guys travel a lot as drug representatives. <laughs> and, and How do you keep your family if you're always on the road? I mean, I don't know if you're always on the road, but... You're not because you, we schedule our own appointments, okay. except our company conventions. Like, for instance, when you're in training, when you first come to us to train, normally that's a two- to three-week process before the pandemic. You, you, you're home study for two weeks, then you come into the home, home office for at least two weeks. So you're going to need a babysitter for two weeks. But the benefit of it is you have a really good job and an opportunity to make a really decent living. So people figure it out. Now, I've got lots of people that don't do overnights at all. They'll drive three hours and then drive back three hours. They'll leave early in the morning and get back that night. Mm. I, I've had managers that would take the last flight out of that night and work all day and fly back home that day so they're only gone after the children have gone to bed. Then I, I've had managers that only they fly in that day and then they'll fly out that afternoon and they're back home. So they so give you some flexibility. You, you have flexibility to rearrange your schedule the best way. you. Now, granted, you may not be there every day to pick up your kid from school. Mm. So that's when the, the village has to come in and help. Mm. The, the, the siblings, the grandparents, you know, the other parents, whomever. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, there are some parents, both of them are drug reps. And sometimes they're going at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got friends that, that, that that's what they've had to do. And for us, it was simple because we didn't have kids in the house when, when we got married. So it's just... My wife and I. Mm -hmm. So, and she's a military brat, so I'm going to be gone three days. She's like, okay, see you later. But, you know, there's other people, they want their spouse at home every night. Right, right. So it's all about flexibility. And I did learn that in order for me to make this living, I've got to be gone. Mm -hmm. And for us to live a certain lifestyle. So, that, once again, there comes the discipline and the sacrifice. What are we sacrificing for our family? To be in this position, you have to sacrifice something mm -hmm. to be that. And then when we want to go take a vacation, now we can afford to take a nicer, a nicer vacation nice and go wherever and do whatever you want to do. It's just a, a little sacrifice. So tell me a little bit. Let me give you this um, scenario. I hear about the, 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 you guys dress really well. Yes. I mean, the ladies come with high heel shoes. The guys come with jackets. Who pays for your clothing allowance? Uh, Is it, there an allowance just for clothes? No, that, that's your uniform. I mean, if you work in a bank, you have to wear a suit. You got to buy your suit. It's, it's the same thing. Now, me, I'm a clothes horse, so I'm a little different. I have several custom suits because that's what I like, but I don't own a boat. I don't own a motorcycle. You know, I don't have three kids in private school. Okay. All the, it's, it's just our uniform. So the girls buy their own shoes and their They dresses. buy their own shoes and dresses. Oh, wow. They okay. do. I guess the, your income can support that habit. Yes. <laughs> that, that's the story I'm telling. <laughs> Give me the ethical relationship between a pharmaceutical rep and the physician. What is, because I will tell you, I've been in New York City mm -hmm. when, and I'll be, and I'm not ashamed to say this, but I knew a, a supplier, she was not of a, she was supplying medical equipment, and they were actually having a relationship with the orthopedic surgeon. That happens a lot. A married orthopedic surgeon. It happens a lot. And he got in trouble. And he should have. So my question is, 
what is the ethical relationship between a drug pharmaceutical rep or product for a company and the physician? Uh, there really isn't one. These are consenting adults. I have several friends whose sole purpose was to marry a physician. So they became a drug rep so they can meet a single physician to marry them. <laughs> I introduced them. <laughs> is it ethical? It, it, it is not, if you're married, it is. <laughs> but if you're not, case in point, true story. I am selling Claritin, okay? Our competition was Allegra and Zyrtec. And the Allegra team, all women, put up these, got put on leather and got on motorcycles and took pictures and left it in all the single doctor's cubicle saying, the Allegra chicks, don't forget us. Okay. So what I did, I walk in, and it, my team was mostly guys. I said, if you want those girls to give you as much attention as you can stand, stop writing their drug for a month and just write ours exclusively. Oh, my goodness. Because the, the, <laughs> if you stop prescribing, their numbers are going to go down. Then they got to come in and say, what's going on, doctor? Why aren't you writing my drug? 78% market share. He was like, Kevin, you were right. <laughs> how do they know you're not writing it? They know from the well, th the, this, this, the, is, this is how it from works. The headquarters sends you a message. Uh, your before, numbers are going down. But, but, but before Walmart took tried to take over many many years ago, the the pharmacies send all of their prescription information to this clearinghouse, uh, and the pharmaceutical companies buy it the information from the clearinghouse about uh, what's being prescribed, uh, and then our then our companies screw up the data and push it down to us of what's trending so that we'll know whom we need to target, whom is doing a good job, whom we're really impacting. So once you get that information, and it's about, about a two-month lag, mm. once you get the information, I said, oh, crap, Dr. Munton, why? He's not prescribing my drug. What's going on? Now, it could have been you just hadn't seen a lot of those patients. Right. But I got to show it to my boss. I, I went by there. I had a discussion with him. This is what's going on. So when I did that, I knew how this worked. So when Dr. Johnson stopped writing their, their drugs, they were in there every other day in his face asking him, and he still married my partner, Allison. He did? <laughs> yes, he did. They have three beautiful children. I was at their wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no ethical dilemma there. You just got adults that are in the same industry. Now, But yes, when you're training, what does the pharmaceutical company tell you guys? No, they, they tell you to be safe, okay. but you're an adult. They can't tell you not to date anybody. Really? There, there's no rule against that. Now, if you, now I'm a baptized born again believer. I'm not cheating on my wife or anything. Right. I've been blessed too much. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And I, I, don't, I don't play with that at all. I'm a non starter on that. Right. And, but if someone else doesn't have that issue and they want to date, who can stop them? Wow. Now, we can't fire them for that. Mm. All we can do is tell them, okay, if this doesn't go well and he stops prescribing our drug or kicks our whole company out because he doesn't like you, then now we got a problem. And you, you, you're going to pay the price. Yes, but there is uh, no ethical thing between the so two. So like I told you, this lady will come to the surgeon, mm -hmm. and then we will be in the OR scrubbed in, and they will disappear. Yes. For three hours, and we're like, <laughs> call the surgeon. The patient is on the table. And, and then they'll, they'll come scrambling back together yes. in New York. And we're like, and then one day I called him, and I could hear her voice in the background, and he was like, I'm coming. I was like, oh, my goodness. And he was married with seven children. I was like, how could you do this to you? But, again, I was like, I, I was blaming the drug rep because I thought no. she she seduced him to use her products, and she was a backstabbing, nope. gold digging. Nope. <laughs> she just seduced him, and whatever came after that just came with it. <laughs> because... We, we in society, we want to get mad and jump on sometimes the other person. Mm -hmm. Even his wife. He, his wife shouldn't have had a problem with her. Her problem was with him because she's married to him. Right. He knows what his vow said and what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And he chose to do that. So he put his family in jeopardy. She was just the vehicle. Right. And oftentimes we, in our industry, we let everybody know, okay, well, I had this team. God, they moved me over. It was me and four of the most beautiful blondes you ever wanted to see. They, they are my good friends to this day. I love them to Arkansas death. so blondes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> love them to death. I mean, the doctors will come up to me, uh, can you get a better looking partner? You know, because <laughs> four of them, I mean, I love them. And my wife has met them all. Okay. I, mean, I mean, to the point where they told her, when he gets ready to propose for you, because we know he's going to do it, if he doesn't give you the ring that we want you to have, oh, we're going to take his credit card and buy you what we think you should oh, have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
And, and like Allison, she married a physician. The other two, Nancy and, and uh, Tamara, they, already, they were already getting married, right. you know. And, and I would tell them, these doctors are going to come at you. Just be safe and know that, you know, you're an adult. No one can control what you do. Right. The company's not going to come after you, but there's a potential that it will be blowback back on the company if it goes badly. And you as a male, you've got to be careful with single female oh physicians, too. It goes both Nursing ways. Staffs, the, Nursing every, staff. Nursing staff. Okay. It, uh, there, there, there are some towns I can't go in. And, I, if, oh, really? and if I'm doing it overnight, I will not tell them I'm there because they will show up at the hotel. <laughs> People are bold. People are bold. But, again, it's what I'm going to do. My thing is, what kind of man am I going to be? Right. What kind of ethical standards do I have personally? And it's up to me. It's not, it's not the company's fault. It's the person. It's the individual. And I tell folk all the time, yeah. if you're going to do that, then you there's going to be a time when you got to pay a consequence. I don't want God to come after me for something that I've done. Right. Because God can do some things to you in your life that no one can handle. Mm -hmm. So I, my prayer is, let me be a good stool over my 90% and keep my head and do what right. I'm supposed to do. What you've done is educated us because a lot of people will write to the pharmaceutical company, my wife was, he, my, your, your drug rep took my, took my husband from me, mm -hmm. and I'm writing to report her. She's a this, 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 and they don't hear anything back from the not drug company. To, <laughs> not going to. And they're like, what because kind of making, company is this? <laughs> but you just told us <laughs> it's nothing, two consenting adults. Two consenting adults. There's, there's nothing they can do with these two consenting adults. Your problems with your spouse. Your spouse <laughs> lets you and your family down. You can bring your kids in there and have them cry all day. Daddy comes <laughs> able. That's what it's going to do with us. It, wow. it, unfortunately, that mm. it, it sounds cold, but that's it. Now, the, the woman, she didn't have to present herself to that man, mm. but he knew he was, he knew he was married. So right. it was really up to him to tell her no. Right, no right. She can come in and say whatever she wants. It's, uh, it's a personal <laughs> decision. Exactly. It's not official business. It's not official company <laughs> business. Now, they'll... they'll, they'll <laughs> Tell the manager, and they'll pull you aside and say, okay, you got to be careful. Mm. But if it's not hurting the company's business, right. it's really not the company's. Wow. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And Especially if they're both single. Yes. If, if one of them was married, married it may get a little yeah. tricky. But if, if, they're, if they're both single, and I've seen it go south, yeah. where the doctor, you're from that company, well, your partner, <laughs> they're not doing me. <laughs> you know. Hey, guys, Kevin is literally, <laughs> literally telling us the, secrets of a drug rep here and we're so grateful because you and i have had stories of such cases and mm -hmm. you know it's a it's it's what it is the drug reps are there to sell their drugs but they're also there to if they find somebody they find attractive they're allowed to do what they want to do which is odd but the truth so we're going to come back next week and finish this conversation up about family faith and fortune Kevin has lovely kids, lovely wife, lovely family, lives in Arkansas. He's going to tell you a little bit about that. Love you. Jesus is Lord. God bless you.